In the morning with a morning practice that aligns myself with my creator. And it's such a simple process and such a simple tool to use. So I encourage you to put that into your day. A to be God. Thank you, God. This is who I choose to be and how I choose to co-create the day. I am. And I am is the affirmation. Always starts with I am because it's the God within. It's the declaration that the God within. I am a magnificent child of God. Now, do I say that in an egotistical manner? No. I say that as a creation of God. The God within me is that. So you declare whatever it is you like. And then you just put <coughs> everything you're grateful for. And the third thing is I am creating. In this day, I am creating. Now, I could say I am creating um, you know, a good talk for the unity of, uh, of uh, Edgewood. I know. You know, I've been here twice, I've had practice. The unity of Edgewood Church. Or I could say I am created a dynamic talk that touches the souls of everyone that comes in the room. That my message is fun and empowering and lightning and gives a message and a tool that people can come go home and use and that will transform their lives. So do you see the difference in what I am creating? And there was a time when, many of you know Mary Morrissey is my good friend and business partner, and she was, uh, we were doing a retreat with Michael Beckwith, and we were doing it in Canada, and all of a sudden she called, she says, we're, we're, gonna, we're changing location, and we're going to do it in Hawaii. I said, great, and I said, where are we going? She says, I don't know, that's up to you. I'd like you to find a five-star hotel that has a spiritual flair to it. I'm like, really? I'm like, sure, Mary, whatever you say. Now, I wasn't somebody who got on and figured out where to get things, but I figured there's a computer and Google and, you know, I could figure it out. So I went on and I tried to figure out all the different hotels and I started calling. And we're three months out. And I start calling all these places and they said, well, we're booked. It's high season. No, we don't have any room. We don't have any room. So I just kept going, um, okay, no problem, no problem. One phone call after another, after another. And finally, I just said, Mary can't find anything. So then she says, well, just keep looking. The next day I wrote in my to be guide, I am creating a retreat center that is a, is a high-end hotel with a, spiritual re, that, with a spiritual feeling that so impacts the lives of every um, student that shows up. And I went on and on and on and on to describe it. Well, that day I get back on the phone. I start calling again. No, it's high season. We're already booked. We don't have anything. I keep getting one thing after another. And then one person says, wait, I do believe that I just talked to somebody over at the Montelani Hotel and they had a cancellation. Now, they only have about 50 spots. I said, we only need 40. That's great. I call the Montelani. And I don't know if you've ever been to the Montelani Hotel. Anyone here? But it is absolutely amazing. I didn't know something like this existed. She started telling me about this hotel and how it's a beautiful hotel and it's been built around the, uh, to preserve the spirituality of the land. And that there are all kinds of um, little sanctuaries and things on the grounds. In fact, we don't even have to be in the, um, in the hotel kind of setting for our meeting. We could book what was called the House of Friends, which is a gigantic room uh, a building off to itself. It's it's three glass windows on all sides, so you can open it up just like you're in nature. And it's your own building. I says, well, there's only 40. She says, that's okay. We make it like it's good for 20 or 30, so you don't have to worry. It's the way we set the room. I said, great. She's going, I don't know. I call Mary. I says, you're not just going to believe this. She says, yeah, that's pretty incredible. So we fly over. A couple days later, we fly over to see, you know, if this is what they say it is. We get there, it's magnificent, and we meet the great Kahuna who does all kinds of spiritual ceremonies with the guests. This is like a five-star hotel. It is a five-star hotel. And we go to bed at night, and you know how they put little mints and things on your, on your pillow? They put spiritual cards. Now, at this point, I'm thinking they know her. It's Mary Morrissey. They, like, made up these cards to get our business. I'm like, sure. They don't really have these spiritual cards they put on people's pillows at nights, but they do. And so we booked the retreat, and when I went back later and I looked at my to-be guide, I got exactly, that day, what I asked for. And the description was, to the T, what happened. So what does that show us? That every single morning, we have the opportunity to get up and co-create our day. 
and we think that we've lost the power of it. Have you ever noticed you think you can do that sometimes? And the sometimes it happens is when you're going on vacation. Have you ever noticed when you're going on vacation you get about three weeks worth of stuff done in two days? <laughs> Why? Because you access a different way of thinking. You ask a bigger question. And you say, I, you know, what's at stake here is I'm going on vacation. So how can everything get done today? And you get it done. You, you live from what I call possibility thinking. As you've noticed, my title is CPO. I'm the chief possibility officer of my life, and so are you. And all it takes is moving into possibility thinking. Now, I remember years ago when I was still, when I was originally on this path, I had a great mentor, and uh, his name was Michael Moran. Some of you might know him. He used to have Unity Church in Tacoma. And I was so frustrated. I said, Michael, I just can't change. I know change your thinking, change your mind. I just can't do that very well. I can do it sometimes, but I can't change everything. And he just said, Karen, it's work. And when he said, Karen, it was work, I went, OK, I can do that if you just teach me the tools. So what I've discovered over the years, if I were to take these little tools and just implement them into my life every single day, it would make a difference. So I encourage you to implement two tools today. One is the to be guide, that you wake up every morning and to say who you are by I am. I am grateful for, and the third one, which is so important, I am creating. And one of the things I love to write every single day is I am creating a life in harmony with my soul's delight. I am creating a life in harmony with my soul's delight. So you have a choice, CNN or ABC. Constantly negative news or, got it already, huh? <laughs> Attitude, belief, and commitment to what you want. You know, there's a great story about a fisherman who, um, he's at the pier fishing, and this young man sees him. And he has his little ruler, and he takes his ruler out, and he catches the fish, and he, and he measures it up to the ruler. And every once in a while, he sees that the fish is bigger than his ruler, so he throws it back into the ocean. And then he keeps, you know, getting another fish, and if it fits his ruler size, he puts it in his bag to go home. Well, this young man keeps watching him, and he says, well, you know, he finally has to find out, why do you do that? And he walks over to the man and says, what's the matter? If they get too big, are they too bony? So is that why you throw them back? He goes, oh, no, no, son. See, I have this frying pan, and I've marked off exactly how big it is. And so if there's any fish that are bigger than my frying pan, I just throw it back. Now, we would laugh at a fisherman who does that. But how many times do we do that? Life gives us a great big dream, and we throw it back. Why? We catch the fish, and what happens is the human thinking, constantly negative news, so we throw it back. We just need to get a bigger frying pan. <laughs> and what you want to do is change the remote to ABC. You want to get a bigger frying pan. And maybe it's in your relationships. Maybe it's in your career. Maybe it's in your health. But you have to ask yourself, you know, with your health, you get a diagnosis. Who makes the decision, the doctor or you? Does the diagnosis have you, or do you have it? You're, um, you, get, you get laid off your job. Could that be the worst thing that ever happened to you, or the best? Could it now be an opportunity for you to co-create with God what you'd really love to do as a career? Is this an opportunity for you? Or is this an, oh my gosh, this shouldn't have happened? See, everything, as you know, is an opportunity. Um, as the Chinese say, crisis equals opportunity. I know you know that, but how do you live that? You live that by moving into possibility thinking, and when CNN happens, you turn on ABC, and you say, excuse me. I'm a child of God. And I deserve da, 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 da. You can fill that in, OK? So I want to make sure you're really good at this, OK? Excuse me. I am a child of God, 